everyone, this is Eli from SwitchCheckIt.com here with an After Effects tutorial on everyone's second favorite day of the week, Effects Friday. And today we are going over something near and dear to my heart called Twixter. And if you guys don't know what it is, then you guys must be blind because I showed you in the intro. But I will show you again because I'm a nice guy like that. Can I get an amen? Check that out. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is, Eli... What the freak? Why do you do that little fall thing? That's because I'm a little sick and my body was a little weak. I'm sorry. Sue me. I have no idea why I've been sick this long, but I think I need to go to the doctor or something. But the second thing you notice is Twixter does a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. There is some ghosting going on, and that's because today is about 30 frames per second Twixter. I am going to cover that half of it because many of you guys don't have 60 frame per second cameras. So um, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I'm going to teach you guys to get the best quality you possibly can out of Twixter with 30 frames per second. And um, why do you even want to use Twixter? That's what some of you guys are probably asking. Like, Eli, I have slow motion, After Effects, and Sony Vegas. Well, angry person, you need to calm down. Here is why you want to use Twixter and uh, let it open. I don't know why QuickTime opens a little slow, but uh, let's go loop just so I know where it, because this is all weird. I'm going to play it for you guys, and it's just going to be on a loop. So check it out. On the left is Sony Vegas, and on the right is After Effects with Twixter. Now, Sony Vegas has a very good slow motion program, but when you slow it down past a certain point, like 70%, it starts getting really bad ghosting when Twixter at about 40%. That's about as low as I would recommend to go with uh, 30 frames per second. But if you can notice, Sony Vegas has a ton of ghosting. And, af and the After Effects with Twixter does not. It has very limited compared to uh, like Sony Vegas or the original After Effects' uh, slow motion. So uh, I'm going to bring you guys back to this screen now. So check it out. Uh, here's what I mean by ghosting. Almost, like almost the same exact frame. And look at all of that ghosting. It's trying to uh, guess the next frame and use its frame blending, which is actually pretty good. But it's just not good enough when you slow it down. And especially compared to Twixter. Look at There's almost no ghosting going on. when. Uh, but there is when... Look at like right there. You can tell. But it's so fast... And it looks so natural compared to this. So, uh, yeah, that's just what I wanted to show you. I took a long time to make that, guys. So please, give this video a like. I mean, I hate asking for likes, but then again, I don't. But just give this video a like. I'm going to provide the footage for you guys. Everything uh, from me jumping and looking like an idiot to, you know. Oh, look at that. I, and I didn't even know what to do when I got up. Just give the video a like, please. I know I look like an idiot, but just... Give the video a like and I will love you forever. Comment, rate, whatever. Okay, so let's open up After Effects real quick. CS6, because we're gangsters like that. I had to upgrade finally. But uh, I, I usually have it open already, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, go over to the left. Double click in this blank canvas area and let's grab the footage. Um, I'm going to be providing this one right here ready. It's at a pretty high quality rate compared to what I normally give you so uh, yeah give yourself a nice pat on the back uh, drag and drop into this blank canvas area to create a new composition and what you're going to do is go ahead and uh, find the spot where you want Twixter applied so uh, let's go over here let's first go down to where it says full and change it to half because Twixter is actually pretty processor heavy and now let's go down to where it says ready and let's click on it and hit enter and just put whatever you want. I'm going to put Eli because uh, that's my name. So if you want to put Eli, go ahead. If you don't, I completely understand. Okay, so now when you find where you want Twixter to be applied, right about here, this is where... <laughs> looks so weird. This is where we want to start tweaking the settings and getting Twixter prepared to be put on because you can't just put Twixter on because you need to set up some frame blending and such so first go to this little icon right here it enables frame blending that's very important then right click on Eli the the layer Eli not me <laughs> idiot uh, go up to frame blending 
and then go to pixel motion. That's what we want, pixel motion. Then go up again, right click on Eli, go to time, enable time remapping. Okay guys, the hard part's done, seriously. Now go up to composition, let's go to composition settings, and as I said, we're messing with 29.97 or 30 frames per second. That's it. it. When it says 30 frames, it's most likely recording at 29.97. So make sure it's at 29.97. Then go down to the duration, and we're just going to put some wacko number in that just make sure it's at least double the duration of the video, which was 6 seconds. So we're going to put in 13 seconds just to mess with it. Then you're going to see this uh, composition... Like, this is how you view the whole composition, so use it, click on it, drag it out, and you will see the whole entire composition now. So, you have time remapping enabled. Now, you can apply Twixer. So, go to the effects and go to the little browser menu and type in Twix. It is a paid program. I will uh, put a link in the description where you can buy it. We're just going to mess with the regular Twixer, not Twixer Pro, because you can just use regular Twixer and get insane professional results. So click and drag it onto Eli. And I'll go up. And here's where we begin. It says Twixter output. Don't mess with that. Color source, Eli. Don't mess with that. Don't mess with anything. Input fields. Uh, you don't want to use either of these. It makes it look weird. Uh, frame rate, make sure that it's at 29.97. We're going to do a Twixer tutorial next week that is at 60 frames per second or 59.95, I believe, 94. I think it's 94 frames. Uh, anyway, that's next week, so <laughs> it's too long to just do both of them in one session. So, um, motion vectors, keep it at best. I tried medium and everything. I, I actually went through all of these before I made this tutorial just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Trust me, these are the best settings, guys. Image prep. What this does is it contrasts those ghosting lines, and it kind of makes it look unnatural to me. It works sometimes with certain plates, or I, I call them plates, but like compositions and stuff. Some shots look good with a, a high contrast enhanced edge but this one in particular does not so we're not going to mess with that I like to put the motion sensitivity up to 100 I keep plenty memory at checked uh, time remapping at speed not frame number because that's how we mess with it uh, this is a percent you're turning it down a percent but I'll get to that in a second so frame interpolation we want to turn that to motion weighted now blend and motion weighted it all depends on the shot uh, motion weighted basically it takes Whatever Twixter is heavily affecting, it will make sure that it's not affecting anything else in the shot. It's really nice. Uh, blending just does the entire shot and makes it blend together. Um, you can you can kind of tell what shots will look better with uh, motion weighted blend because if you do motion weighted blend on like a car chase or something, then it will make the whole entire thing look very strange, and you'd want to use blend, but. Uh, for this shot, we're going to use motion weighted because I think it gives a more natural approach to the video. So, now smart blend, we're going to check it, and uh, we're going to do motion composition. This um, this basically just kind of, like in my opinion, this is just what I, I I never used to use it, but with some shots, it makes it look better. And what it does is it contrasts the shot and just what it's affecting, and it makes it look more natural at parts but sometimes if you do too much it just looks so unnatural that it looks retarded or stupid I'm sorry I don't mean to say those words any slut <laughs> that was for you G Cola <laughs> any slut um, basically let's get to Twixter now <laughs> so as I said before we're going to get to the speed now and uh, keyframing so drop down the effects menu then drop down the Twixter menu and then go down to the output control. And here's how we're going to keyframe it. Go to where you want Twixter to start. So I'm going to go, I look so stupid in this. Oh my goodness. So right about here is where I want it to start. So I'm going to kick, <laughs> kick, click the keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward a few frames. So then it eases into it. So right about where I start going. And now we're going to hit another keyframe. And we're going to go down to 40%. Now, um, this is how it works. This is 40, 
40% of the original speed. If I was to go forward past 100, this would be 200% the normal speed. You get what it's saying there? So we want 40%. That's slowing down less than half. So you're going to get some pretty crazy slow stuff. Now, um, I would never go below 40 with 30 frames per second because it gets just insanely... Uh, unrealistic like watch 10% is a very cool looking effect but look at that um, it just modulates it so bad and it just doesn't look natural at all it's very sad that's why um, next week I'm gonna show you guys the 60 frames per second and it handles 10 it handles 2% so nicely with just that amount of frames um, I should have explained how Twixter works in the first place Twixter is not a slow motion program. It's a flame. It's um, it's a frame blending program. It just enhances and makes a more advanced approach to frame blending. It uses the engines such as Sony Vegas and After Effects, and it enhances the frame blending capabilities of that program. So that's why 30 frames is not as good as 60 frames because the more frames, the more Twixter has to work with and has more to blend. And you can't just BS it and say you have six, like 60 frames because it will make it look pretty bad. So yeah, I should have explained that earlier. I'm sorry, guys, but uh, whatever. It's my life. I can do what I want. So <laughs> uh, with timer mapping enabled, uh, we can click on the edge of this composition right here and we can lengthen it. Oops, did not mean to do that. If you double click on this, it brings up the composition in a different window. All you have to do is see it was over here. All you have to do is go back up to this tab and you can bring it back up. Um, so yeah, you can click on the edge of it, bring it out, drag it out to 13 seconds or however long you want it. doesn't matter. And now me, I just let it play out. That was uh, what I did in the original. I just let it go all the way at, oh wait, I still have it at 10. Oops, go back. <laughs> Let's go back to that frame. Click on the frame if you did the same thing I did and was an idiot. I just go back, put the marker back exactly where you had it because if you put it right here and you try to change it back to like 200 or whatever it just makes another keyframe so delete that keyframe go back line that up then click on the keyframe and now put it back to 40 that's what we want so now go forward and uh, you can make it like right here I'll make it uh, end right how I did in the original so uh, right here, my foot is barely touching. We'll go a little bit further back, right before it touches, right there, right in the middle. And we're going to hit another keyframe by hitting that little diamond right there. Then we're going to go forward, and we're going to ease it into normal speed. So now we're going to click on that speed, and we're going to go 100%. So now it goes from right here, goes normal motion, oh, slow motion when I jump, oh, Boom, and then it goes back to normal speed slowly. So that's a pretty cool effect. Um, where does uh, where do we want it to end? Let's make it end right about here, probably. When I <laughs> look like a Sasquatch. And how we, uh, if you want to make a quick edit without doing a whole bunch of BS, right click or yeah, right. Wait, no, left click on the work area, drag it over to where you want it to end and then uh, make it stop right there, then right click on it and go trim comp to work area and that will just make a quick edit and now it's uh, everything that you want. And the same thing. So, <laughs> well, and the extra point is good. Anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much all that there is to Twixter, but uh, there was some pretty cool coloring going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, I'm going to right click in here, I'm going to go new, adjustment layer. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to call it CC for color correction. And today we're going to do a different color correction than I normally do. We're going to go down to misfire first because I always put a vignette on. Always. Makes it look so much better. Boom. Look how much better it looks. Okay. So we're going to go up. We're going to go to looks this time. Instead of mojo, let's use some looks. Now hit edit to mess with looks. And I'm going to use one of my favorite looks. Um, Blockbuster always looks pretty awesome. I've used that in a few of our videos if uh, you guys can notice that. But one of my favorite is called Mishandled Negative. It's part of the classic stock emulation package within Magic Bullet looks. So 
uh, you can get that and look how awesome that makes it look hit finished to get a full quality rendering of it in here and boom look how nice that looks and the final thing was a nice little lens flare over here so right click on it go new we're gonna go to solid we're gonna call this hit enter we're gonna call it flare Ooh, cute that's cute we're gonna scroll down I'm gonna video copilot click optical flares drop it onto the flare layer and now go to oh yeah down here let's start with that if you don't have the blending modes hit F4 you see that it brings it up and now we're gonna go to screen so now you can see it now click optical flares and drag the flare where you want it I'm gonna put mine right behind this tree go to options and we bought um, the pro presets 2 package back when there was like a good deal on it it came with uh, pro presets 1 and 2 but I'm gonna use pro presets 2 because I think there's a little bit better flares in it uh, where's the flare I want uh, where is it mini anamorphic that's a beautiful flare I'm gonna use that one I'm gonna actually increase the brightness to like 140 and boom right there it is done because I, I applied warp stabilization to this shot beforehand. Uh, oh yeah, and thank Brandon for this beautiful shot. He found it. And with that, we can render it. And uh, we can see the product that we created together, guys. I will put all the things I used in this tutorial in the description. That includes the links to buy all the plugins and all the footage for free if you guys want it. Just uh, download it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for the shot a few times played over again and again. Um, <laughs> what the heck am I doing right there? Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we love you guys so much, and we're so happy to be making videos again. Uh, and Stay tuned for Brandon's new tutorial on Tuesday. See you guys later. Peace.